Not everything is communicated verbally when we're interacting with other people. Sometimes your body language, the way that you handle yourself, your deportment, everything that you do, gestures that you make, etc., send subconscious messages to other people about how confident you are. And that can often have a bearing on the way that people treat you. So in this video, I want to talk about the different types of body language, how you can perhaps be saying something that you don't really want to say, and how you can improve things and make yourself appear to be more confident than perhaps you really are. Okay, let's look at some typical insecure or loser body language. And this all comes from a survey done by the Australian National Review. And the first thing that really gives you away as not being confident is lack of eye contact. You know, people who lack confidence find it difficult to maintain eye contact. They're afraid that people are going to be looking at them. They, you know, they shifty looking around all the time. So that is a big giveaway is lack of eye contact. Then there's hand movements. One of the first things that happens when you're really nervous is your hands start trembling. And that can be a big giveaway that you're not confident that you might be a bit fearful and so on. Another thing is fidgeting with your hands or you're playing around with a pen or a wristwatch that you're wearing or with other objects near you. Another giveaway is slouching. You know, poor body posture is another indicator of insecurity. When you sort of slouch down, when you're trying to make yourself as small as possible, trying to become unnoticed, that, that, that's another good indicator of insecurity. Then there's laughter. Nervous laughter, high-pitched laughter, and fake laughter can all show that you're feeling pangs of self-doubt. You know, sometimes you talk to people and they giggle, and that's because they're not particularly confident or they don't really understand what you're saying. So they sort of giggle inappropriately, and a lot of people find that really annoying. But it is a general sign of insecurity. And of course, handshakes are a dead giveaway. What's known as the dead fish handshake is a handshake that is not particularly firm. It's a sweaty palm and you know, they sort of only grip your hand briefly before they let go and it feels horrible. You, know, you, want, you want to sort of you know, wipe your hand on your clothing after you've shaken hands with someone like that because it just doesn't feel very good. It feels cold. It doesn't feel very sincere. Other people will try and hide their insecurity by giving you an overly firm handshake. You know, it'll be almost like they've clamped your hand in a vice uh, and you come away after shaking hands with them and you, you, your hand is throbbing. And that's another sign of insecurity because they're trying to overcompensate. They don't want to give a dead fish handshake. So they'll give you a really, really firm handshake because they think that it shows sincerity, but actually it doesn't. It's another giveaway. And this happens all throughout life. If you think back to your school days, there was probably one kid who was always getting picked on. You know, the one kid who was always uh, being pushed around and being bullied in the playground, always getting his or her lunch stolen, you know, being tripped up as they were walking down the hallway or pushed down the stairs, that sort of thing always getting into fights and always coming off worse. And you know, perhaps that kid was you. And it was because other kids could read the body language and would know that this person was not very confident, was not very secure, and would take advantage of that. And of course, that goes on all through life. You get people then who are not very confident, who end up working for a bullying boss, you know, somebody who is going to give them a much harder time than he or she gives anybody else. And they're always picked on, they're always find fault with them, etc, etc. They're always made to be a bad example. 
And even if this person stands up to the boss and thinks, right, I'm not going to take this anymore, they find that if they turn around and argue with the boss and other people get away with it, they probably won't. They'll probably end up getting fired because the boss will take the attitude, well, if I let this wimpy person push me around, if I get to the point where people see that this wimpy person is getting his or her own way, other people who are more confident are going to go ahead and try it on as well. So I'm going to clamp down hard on this person because I know that they're not confident, they're not secure, they're a bit of a wimp, they're a bit of a loser. I know they won't sue for unfair dismissal because they just simply haven't got the guts. So I'll clamp down hard. I won't take any nonsense from them, not like I do with other people. And that sort of thing goes on in business all the time. And it goes on in life. If you appear to be unconfident, then people are going to treat you as such. Okay, now let's look at some typical confident body language. And this comes from a survey conducted by Forbes magazine. And the first thing that they recommend that people who want to appear confident should stand tall and take up space. Power, status and confidence are non-verbally displayed through the use of height and space. So you want to keep your posture erect, your shoulders back and your head held high and it makes you look sure of yourself. And you want to maintain positive eye contact. People in the US, Europe, Australia and many other parts of the world will expect you to maintain eye contact 50 to 60% of the time when you're having a conversation with them. So a good rule of thumb when you're talking to somebody is to maintain eye contact for long enough that you can tell what color their eyes are. And another thing is to use open gestures. Keeping your movements relaxed, using open arm gestures and showing the palms of your hands, you know, that's the ultimate see I have nothing to hide gesture, are silent signals of credibility and candor. And something that you should avoid doing is folding your arms across your chest because that's putting up a barrier between yourself and the other person. And some people might read that as hostile body language. Something else that you could do is reduce nervous gestures. You know, if you catch yourself doing those things that we talked about earlier, then take a deep breath and steady yourself by placing your feet firmly on the floor and your hands palm down in your lap on the desk or on the conference table. And stillness sends a message that you're calm and confident. And finally, you should smile. The human brain prefers happy faces and we can spot a smile at 300 feet. That's about, what, 100 meters. And smiling not only stimulates your own sense of well-being, it also tells those around you that you're approachable and trustworthy. And it should be a genuine smile. You know, smile with your eyes as well as your mouth because people can also spot a fake smile a mile off. So there you go, just a few ways that you can spot confident and unconfident body language and ways that you can um, correct yourself if you find that you're sending out the wrong message.